yourself, you know, because a lot of times we don't know that we need to apologize to somebody, but apologizing can be the bravest thing because you don't know the outcome from that apology. You don't know how much the relationship can be restored or strengthened or help. Tears can be brought or it can prove somebody to you. So it's not just the apology that you have to be brave with, but the outcome of the apology and what's going to happen during the apology. I feel like that's what makes you truly great. Because you can say an apology and not mean it. And that you know, that doesn't really make you great because you're just saying words, but it's the action of feeling what's going on during and after. And then to forgive, it's a lot of people may say it's really hard to forgive. The process sometimes take 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 a take a toll on some people because it's different stages of forgiveness. A lot of times you like to hold on to pain, we like to hate that person for a long period of time. And hate sometimes is a feeling, it's, it's a strong feeling to fight. You have to be really strong, you have to make up in your mind, in the depths of your soul. You can't just say, I forgive you. It's the action of forgiveness that proves your strength and valor and discipline as a person. So I feel like the action of forgiveness is, is the toughest part in that, that true, true, your strength, not just your strength, but the person is your strength and loving the person who are forgiven. And then forgetting brings some happiness, you know, because like everybody just said, it's not forgetting the experience because you're, all, you're always going to need the experience of how this person is this, you know how to deal with them. But to for, basically forget the mistake, to move past it, to move past the pain, to move past it what they like the pain that you felt inside because if you always dwell in the past how can you live in the present and how can you go on into the future and how can you truly experience happiness so i believe when you truly not just forget but forgive and truly apologize that's when it that's when it brings you true bravery true strength and true happiness Amen. Amen. I love all the comments that they all make um, great, great sense. And um, I want to just pick it back and wrap it up and close out. The first to apologize is the bravest. But there are times when people are very intelligent and they're full of emotional intelligence and also sights. And they will pretend to be the bravest and appear to be very sincere with an apology to see if they can move you back in to destroy you. So it is imperative that when someone has done you something that is so beyond, beyond the beyond, is if you will, and they were the boldest and the bravest one to take the initiative to apologize that you don't be so easily win with the apology, but that you will wait cautiously. Love believe all things, but love is not foolish. And the leopard never changed its spot. So you have to pay attention because the very intelligent slip jack will apologize. And those who study emotional intelligence and full of sights, they can play with your innocence, your purity, your vulnerability, your gullibility, and they can come off very sincere, and they're not. So we also want to pay attention to these kind of behavior. Love prove all things. So after the apology, you really want to see if they met the apology. Mm -hmm. You have to pay attention because if they could have done that great thing to you, then understand we all make mistakes and we all do wrong. Nevertheless, we still have to prove that this apology was sincere. And prove, and sometimes we have to wait for a long time for the enemy come to steal. First, he's gonna discourage you, steal. So the discouragement could be that first, and then the apology, and then there is gonna be a lot of games just to get you back 
where now they know what hurt you. Now they know what upsets you. Now they know what annoys you. So they're playing you to see how they can kill you, how they can destroy you. So with that apology, accept it, but do not get comfortable. Okay? And see them as the bravest, but see you also as the bravest because you're going to believe. You're going to believe to prove. Okay? Because love proof all things. Love believe all things. You believe to prove. Don't get comfortable. Because once bitten, twice shy. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we want to pay attention to that. The first to apologize is the bravest. And let's flip the coin. You did something so wrong and so bad. And you were the first to apologize. You have to watch yourself as well to see what kind of spirit was operating in you. What makes me do that? You have to start to do a self-analysis on you. Because if you could have done that, you'll do it again. And it simply means that you're ruled by a spirit that is not of God, that is wrong and so wrong, and the spirit is in your soul and waiting to embarrass you and let you do something that you never even want to do. And then there you go, you make the mistake again. And you're, you're like, wait a minute, oh my God, I make this mistake again. So we are the bravest when we um, come to terms to see what someone do and we vice versa and you apologize. But we have to learn to not get comfortable even with our own wrongdoing. Which simply means you have to do deep evaluation on yourself. Mm -hmm. What caused me to do this? What made me do this? I really need to apologize and seek God and ask God to deliver me from me and call out the enemy in you mm -hmm. and rule mm -hmm. death to it. Because apology, this is, a, this is what you call real apology. Let me tell you what real apology is. You, you will maybe corporately do something wrong and you get up and you said, I apologize and that's it. But when you can go back and write an apology, you sit, Paul wrote many epistles. He was a writer. And his, his way of getting messages were letters. The real apology is when someone sit down and write, write you personally and said, I have done wrong. I have truly done wrong. And they're going to always until you say, I got it. You don't need no more apology. That's what made me who I am today. I never apologized once. I apologize until that person sees that I'm truly sorry. David never go to God and tell God I've sinned once. He's always, always telling God. That's why God loved David. He always go and repent. Always. And he's the only one that does that. And he was truly loved by God. And amidst all his mess, he reigned as king. There is no real apology if it was never revisited. There's no real apology. You are the bravest when you can first apologize. People will jump up, I apologize. Uh-uh. No. Don't count that as an apology. It could be a surface. But when, you, when you're deeply sorry about something, you write about it. When Crystal Wells came back, she wrote me a letter and expressed when I had a brother who hurt me bad, he wrote me a letter. When you can receive a letter, a letter, we're going to go to the political world, political world. What did a lawyer do with our great friend who's, who's treated blank, wrong? Huh? A letter is sent. Uh, if, if no letter is sent, if it's not written and documented, it's not an apology. The letter was written, but the letter was rewritten again and sent again. 
don't get twisted when someone jump and say they apologize. Don't get twisted. We have to look in the we have to look in the blueprint or the fine print of statements. I'm taking you into the fine print. Oh, I apologize. And that's it. What? Think about the level of mess that you have done or the person done to you. I have gone to every pastor I thought I did wrong to. Not once, not twice. Oh, there was one I went to over and over and over and over until I was convinced that my apology was accepted. That's what David did. You see the consistency of the plea. And David said, plead my cause. Oh God, plead. Please, plead. He cried to God a lot, a lot, always. A lot of us get twisted with this impromptu apology, and it's good. But we still have to pay attention to the grave situation. Pay attention to what you did and what the person did. And then when you can size that up and say, this is sincere. Now, you have to leave that apology if you want to forgive. Your, the forgiveness is on you. When you forgive, it's for you. It's not for the person. It's for you. The forgiveness is for you. So you're strong. Because, oh, you did that? Oh, you move on. Because if you hold them up, you are holding yourself back. You're not holding back the person. You're holding yourself back. The forgiveness is on you. You're bringing disease on you. You're bringing mental sickness on you. All kinds of stuff. While that person is it, it, it's free. They don't care. You have got to let go and let God handle them. You understand? But if you hold them up and don't forgive them, God, listen, you, you will never see anything better. They're just going to continue to, to go forward and go forward because you're holding them up and holding up yourself. Holding up yourself while they're free. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is for your health. When you forgive someone, you make up in your mind that ain't nobody deserve your health. Nobody deserve to destroy your health. Nobody. Unforgiveness makes you sick. Makes you miserable. Make your brain clutter. You can't think. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't even remember things. You have to be programmed to remember something. Nobody can call on you sudden. And what you always do, you can't do it because you, so much unforgiveness in you. You got to be geared to do what you need to do. That's what unforgiveness does. When you forgive, you're free. Your brain is free. Everything about you is free. You're free. Get that? When you forget, you don't forget what happened. You need what happened because it's going to be your testimony. You can't forget the scenario because it's going to make you wiser. But when you remember it, you must be happy. You must be happy that that situation happened to you. Because now you're wiser. You got to be happy. A person who is not happy, they're full of unforgiveness, they're full of hate, they're full of resentment. Happiness is a choice. It's a choice. So you have to choose to forgive. You have to choose to just say, oh, forget that. So we have what? We have the first to apologize, right? Okay. So when you apologize, mean it and show it. Don't say it one time and leave it there. You're the bravest when you make sure who you hurt is okay. You're full of love when you revisit the wickedness you've done. You can't just, I apologize and you be comfortable. No, no. Mr. Doty said, it takes time. For some people, it takes time. They need you. When you hurt them, they need you. When you did them wrong, they need you to help heal them. Everybody don't get over a situation like that, the snap of the finger. It doesn't mean they're the devil. It means they're human. And love takes time to heal when it hurts so much. They are human. 
And we have a right to be angry and not sin. We have a right to feel hurt and not sin. Hurt, but don't sin. Cry, but don't sin. Cry, said, Lord, give me the strength. Please, Lord, endure this pain. Give me the strength to overcome quickly. Forgive my friend and pray for the friend who hurt you. Pray for the person who hurt you. And Lord, heal my pain. Heal, heal, help my friend who hurt me. Don't let us hate. That's, and you're going to hurt after the prayer. You might feel still hurt. But if you pray like that another three, four, five days, you're going to find, oh my God, I'm getting healed. Mm -hmm. Oh my, And worse, if they revisit it, they're going to heal you quick and they're going to be so blessed. They're going to, they're going to, once they read, it, it's just like your husband hurts you. He said, Sarah, man, it, you just, you cry too much. All right. And it just leave you like nothing happened. It hurts you more because you're looking for him to, I'm sorry, baby. I'm truly sorry. And you're looking for him to say it again next week. It's like you hurt your child. You don't just say sorry to the child, right? You go, you forgive mommy, promise. You won't do it again. You, you go back. And you, you revisit the situation. That's love. That you show that the person cared about you. But if they apologize once and never come back at it. No. No. They're not right. There is a demon there. Did y'all get that? And if you never go back, you yourself not right. Because it's so great. Every situation is different. If it's very grave and painful, and you have to do that. You have to do that. If you don't, that person, as long as you live, that person have a red line there. As long as you live, that person is going to have a red cake. Not against, not hating you, but is going to be cautious of you as long as life lasts. Because they weren't the first. They, they come on the surface, but they really did not apologize. When you sin, they, you know why the church is messed up? They do the worst thing, then they say, confess, say this prayer with me, you're saved. There is no brokenness. There's no true repentance. There's no crying at the altar. There's no laboring. There's nothing. And they put them up to do praise worship the next week. Huh? And the church is contaminated. And that's what makes life the way it is. A lot of people walking around not happy. Because they're looking for the person who truly hurt them. To say, look man, I hurt you man. I, I, I'm hurting because I hurt you. I apologize but I still think I feel to come to you and make another apology. Here's a letter. I might not be able to express myself, but in writing I can. Can you read this? That's what heals. And remember, there are times when people hurt you or you hurt somebody. Don't expect them to just be healed immediately. Well, for me, I can. I can do that. I'm seasoned. Talking to young people. It takes time. And you have to go through so much pain and hurt and disappoint. I have been truly wounded in my life. I've been so hurt, I don't think I can hurt anymore. I don't think, I don't think anybody can hurt me anymore. Look what happened in Texas. I have been insulted, I've been humiliated, I've been used, abused, refused, kicked to the curb. Now, and nothing you can do to move me. I don't care about your apology either. It don't mean nothing to me. I care about your action after what you say. You apologize. Let me see what you're going to do after this. And then I know where you are and who you at and who you be. So I'm seasoned. But I'm talking to the young people who are going out in tomorrow's world. If it's something simple that, okay, you can, you can, you can move on because foxes, foxes eat out your vine. The little things, the little things will eat out your mind. But you have to look into the situation when someone has done you something very grave. You have to look and see how they treat it. How did they treat it? How did they treat the situation that was so grave and so painful and so hurtful? 
A lot of wives cannot cannot get over when the husbands hurt them right away. They, the wife carry the feelings for a moment, whether it be subconscious or conscious. But think about the person on the outside that you damage. Think about it. And that's your wife, and that's your husband, and you still you still hurt. So what about the person that you hurt on the outside? The wife don't have a little attitude because it's normal. You did that to me and you're acting like I'm not human. And then you want to come and get through benevolence. And, but you, you're doing it, but there ain't no passion in it because you're still wounded. Huh? You understand? So that little surface apology, you can't buy into it. You can buy into it and get hurt again and worse than before. So we want to get into the depth of apology. We want to get into the depth, into the fine point that we are not looking into, understand. Because those who study intelligence and emotional intelligence and psychology, they'll play you because they know, oh, if I go butter her up, and even when they come and butter you up and butter you up and write you epistles, you still have to pay attention. Because you have to mark what they did, the level of what they did. You can't get 100% comfortable. You still have to be wide as a serpent and honest as a dove. Did I help somebody today? Amen. Amen. Any comment? Especially if the person, if you know the person has certain demonic spirits about them. Don't. Don't get comfortable. No time. Respect their greatness, but don't get comfortable. Respect their act of greatness and pay attention. Pay attention. Because once bitten, twice shot. You remember when I said I'm sick and tired of y'all apology? It become it become like, wait a minute here. What? This this this, this sound like a like a game. I want no more. I just want to want y'all to get it. Get it, because I'm not flattered by apology. I'm not flattered. I pay attention to the spirit. What kind of spirit is this that just want to give apology? Uh-uh. This got to be eliminated. When we start reading an apology, the husband gonna always go out there and cheat. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. Get it? I apologize because he thinks that word soothes you. And what he's doing, he can keep playing this game. The devil is a liar. Vice versa. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. So we have to pay attention to wording. And always visualize, visualize, and look telescopically into everything and microscopically. Look at a distance and look close. What is this saying? Wait a minute here. How many times apology? Why so often? What's up here? Wait a minute here. Uh-uh. And recognize that it's become a monster in your life. And you got to break that monster down with prayer and fasting or eliminate them totally out of your life. Cut them loose. Anything that she is done to cut it off. Whatever the cost. So I trust I've helped you all. Yes, Sarah. I, I just have a question. Because someone told me this a while back. And it, it rubbed me so the wrong way. And I thought I was the problem when they said it to me. So they said, I'm only apologizing because that's what God will want me to do. And I, and I took a moment. I'm like, so it's not, it, you, you're, not a, you're not sorry for what you did. You just feel like. It's a norm. You're, you're, you're supposedly a Christian. That that's what you're, you're doing because you're supposed to do it. Not because you know that you hurt the person. Know that you did something that's wrong. That's an hypocrite. That person is an hypocrite, a deceiver. 
That's a deceiver. That's a Judas. Plain and as ABC. That's an enemy in the camp. Yes. And there are people who use religion to play you. And Bible. Mm -hmm. No, no. Get your hermeneutics together, honey. Don't play with me. You got to get real up in here. This world is seriously wicked, okay? It's a wicked world, young people. And you are becoming young adults. Pay attention. Because our experience is for you all. So you all don't have to go through the pain that we went through. Just to help you out. So you can go forth and live and be able to not go through the pain that we go through. We bored for you. So this is, this is, this is empowerment for you. You have it? Grab it. Use it. Live with it. And you will be successful in life. And nobody can take you out easily. As a matter of fact, even if you have a business, you have to watch some of the workers who work with you. Especially the ones that my like keep like saying, I apologize. I am, you gotta watch that one. Don't be quick to accept it. In other words, accept it. Believe it, but wait to prove it. How about that? Because love, alright, that's it. Love believe all things and love prove all things. And make sure you are guarded. You're guarded. Everyone deserve a chance. Everyone in life deserve a chance. And sometimes we need the people who give us trouble. We need them. Uh-huh. We do. If you, you bite your tongue, you can't pull up out your tongue. You have to wait till it's healed. <laughs> and it hurt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because remember, love believe all things and love prove all things. So believe it, okay? Wait to prove it. Don't just say, oh, they don't mean the apology. No. No. Wait to prove it. And while you're waiting, do not become vulnerable and gullible to this person. Amen? Amen. Forgive, forgive, forgive for yourself. Forgive because you want to stay healthy. If you hold on to grudges, you will die and quit. Or you will look sick. You become vegetable. You want to stay happy and go lucky and pretty? Just, oh. Whatever, I'm moving on, honey. You don't deserve my peace. Uh uh. So, any other question? Any other command? Yeah. Why is it the end of somebody who show you like your wrongs and like they'll apologize, but then they'll say like, but, and then they'll show you like all oh, your wrong or they'll bring up something they should No, did no, that that's a that's an enemy. If someone apologizes and they're saying but and they're bringing up your mistake. That's an enemy or they have no intelligence. Their basic intelligence is beyond, it, it below basic. They're not basically intelligent. You cannot apologize and then you're saying, bringing in a conjunction and then projecting the person ways. Because what somebody see in you is what is in them. If somebody see a bad way in you and they keep talking about it, that way is in them. That's it. You can't stun a person too much. You gotta check yourself. Because what you can't stand is in you. And that's not a good friend. It's not a good friend. That friend needs help. That friend needs to read How to Win Friends and Influence People. That friend needs to read a book called Emotional Intelligence. And that book, uh, another book, uh, What is a Friend? Then they need to read because maybe they they don't have the knowledge and the understanding of true friendship and um, communication. Yeah. They could be a real friend, but there's a spirit there that's operating and they don't know. We suffer for lack of knowledge. Yeah. And if they cannot be helped and cannot be instructed or corrected, you don't want to be around them because the, the, the correction of a friend is better than the kiss of an enemy. And you, if you, the Bible said, do not correct the scuffer, lest they kill you or you be the scuffer. So if you have a friend that you cannot correct, run for your life. That's, that's, a, that's a slow killer. Run. You got to run. And when you correct them, you still got to watch them because you have those who are very intelligent, book smart, and they will play. 
So when you correct them, you have to stay censored to see if the correction has brought any kind of secrecy, secret animosity. Because people can secretly hate you and you will not know until they kill you. And it's going to be too late. Yes. So you, you, you cannot correct, don't correct anyone that does not take correction. Don't, don't correct them. And then you have some of them that say, thank you, thank you. For, and then when, when they leave you, they go and they grumble and talk against you. So you have to pray for God to give you visions to hear them. Because God will let you hear them. He will let you hear them. Yes. You, you, you will get visions and you will literally hear and see that you have a snake in your life. But you have to have a prayer life for that. A good prayer life. Yes. Yes, you can because you were so hurt um, for doing the wrong you did. You the hurt with you, and you're going to do that until you feel like it is accepted. And nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with that. You're gonna find peace at the end of the day because you you want to make sure you're so sorry that. It hurts you more than it hurt the person. That's that's over the apologizing, which shows love. That's true love. That's what you call true love. And a person like that will die for their friend. Yes, when they overly apologize, they will die for you. Because they're hurting that they hurt you. They're hurting. They can't be happy. Nothing matters to them. I hurt my friend. I can't. I can't function. I can't function. No, I've got to do something else. I've got to go take my friend out. I, I, when Deborah was around and she did so wrong to me, she took me shopping. She she took me. She gave me finances. She did the world, but I still paid attention. And that demon came back up. She went in her 401k and even blessed me. She took me to Charlie's and bought me jewelry. She took me for dinner. She And she said, I am so sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me, Pastor. Why could I do this? And she did. And she meant it. But I still make sure I stay cautious because I saw what demon was in her and the stronghold that was in her. And I take all of that and not stay cautious. She would have killed me. Yeah, because she was possessed. Now, if you're not possessed and you do something like that, nothing is wrong with that. It simply means you're truly sorry and you're genuine. And she was genuine. She was. But when your soul is possessed, it's only God can deliver you. Only God. So people will apologize and they'll give you the world, but they'll still hurt you. So we have to be sober, be vigilant because the enemy seeks to devour only whom he may devour. And remember, it's not the people that's far from you, it's the people that's close to you. So it's better you over apologize and find peace with yourself than you under apologize and there's no peace. There's an ism in the, in the soul. There's an ism in the soul that you don't even know is there. Any other comment? I can remember the sin. I can forgive you. The question that you just said, back in January, when I um, hurt you, um, it hurt me so bad that I killed you. Oh, Mr. I Wonder, could, you are the best. I you are rest. the best. I could not stop. I couldn't rest until I just knew. She never stopped until I had to tell her, you need, you need to know, I don't have anything. She even went to Elder, I think, or somebody. I, I, said, look, I said, look here, Minister Wanda, it's over. She, she, you have the gift of apology. You are one of the most genuine apologetic person I've ever met. Even when, when you were in quarantine, you call an appeal. And I put other people in, in quarantine and there was no appeal. You appeal and God 
make a way for you where it was just canceled without me canceling it. So that's what God will do. She, you are the, let me tell you, you are the most, and yet had a very deceptive spirit. And through your apologetic, genuine spirit, you have overcome it. Yeah. I've never, I, I, I may be under my stout, I know. Somebody will keep coming back. She comes back over and over and I'm like, look. I don't know that I'm like, look here. That's what you call real apology. An appeal. I know I'm in quarantine and send letters. She write letters to me. Letters. This is the only one in the ministry that does this. Minister Wanda. Write letters. Notes. I'm like, share her notes again. Lord Jesus. Yeah. That's real apology. And my son, my son does that too. When I get, when he do wrong, and I, I was reading one day that I found it because I keep, I keep them, right? I'm, mommy, I love you. I didn't mean it that way. I, I, I apologize, mommy. When are you going to take me to do my driving test? <laughs> <laughs> that's all <laughs> and it just makes you it, it just melts you down it makes you it just it, 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 it soothes you it soothes you she helps to bring healing to the pain even when she did what she did with her husband over and over until I turn around loving the husband more than her You see what apology, real apology does? That's what real apology does. That's a big, perfect example. So you can and it worked for your good. It worked for your good. Anybody else? So I have some Spanish dances here. <laughs> going to close if there's no other command. Y'all ready to close? Any final remarks? No. Oh, you're to keep going. Okay. All right, we're done and um, you campus end for the day. We're going to just have a closing prayer. And we're going to have Brother Isaac to close us out. Amen. Amen.